Hi everyone, um, I'd like to thank you for joining us for our webinar this morning on understanding and managing behaviour. Sorry we're a few minutes late, um, I was having some technical difficulties, the joy of the internet and the, war the web. Um, but before I actually start, I'm just going to give you an overview of the webinar. So first of all, my name is Veronica and I will be talking to you about what is managing behaviour, why it is important to manage child's behaviour and some key points to managing behaviour. Mary will speak about behaviour and how it is linked to the ages and stages of child development. Charlene will talk to you about specific ways to help manage your child's challenging behaviour. Lynn will then show us her second session on baby reflexology. And finally, Polly will answer some of your questions that you may have around behaviour management. I hope you enjoyed today's webinar. So let's begin. Okay, so before we talk about the best way to manage behaviour, let's first look at understanding behaviour. What is behaviour? Behaviour is our actions and responses to feelings, emotions and needs. All behaviour has meaning and our thoughts and feelings and emotions influence our behaviours, both positively and negatively. Behaviour is one of the main ways you can recognise what your child is thinking and feeling. It is your child's way of communicating to you what they are thinking and feeling. Children often display a poor behaviour, such as stomping, crying, moodiness, when their emotional or physical needs are not being met. Their behaviour is like saying, I have a need and no one is meeting that need, i.e. your child is simply trying to express their feelings. So when your child is having a tantrum or an emotional outburst, think about what your child is trying to communicate through their behaviour. By being aware of what influences your child's behaviour, it will help you manage behaviour more effectively. As your child's parent, you will know your child best. You will know certain things or certain situations that your child does not like and how they usually behave in these situations. For example, if you have to go on a long journey and you know your child becomes upset and irritable without food, prepare snacks to take with you before you go, as this will help reduce the chances of your child becoming angry or upset. The way a child behaves is also linked to their individual personality, their capacity to cope and to their stage of child development. Mary will talk about behaviour and how this is linked to the ages and stages of child development next. As your child may be acting out because they may not have mastered the skill to manage their feelings and express them in an appropriate way. So what is managing behaviour? Managing behaviour, put simply, is how you respond to both your child's positive and negative actions. The approach you as a parent take to managing behaviour will impact on the behaviour itself. If you react or shout whenever your child acts out, your child learns to react and misbehave when things don't go their way. If you stay calm and try to solve the problem, your child learns to stay calm and looks for solutions to their problems instead of looking for someone else to blame. By doing this, you're modeling good behavior management and teaching your child the appropriate way to behave. Modeling behavior stems from Bandura's social learning theory, where people learn new things by observing others, imitation and modelling people around them. Children's patterns of behaviour are learned from the people around them. As children learn by watching everyone around them what to do and how to do it, especially their parents, whether it be good or bad behaviours. Behaviour theorists such as Watson and Skinner believe that all behaviours are learned through interaction with the environment. The experience of this environment influences and shapes behaviour and development. Development is considered a reaction to rewards, punishment, stimuli and reinforcements through a process called conditioning. A type of conditioning called operant conditioning, conditioning is where reinforcement or punishment shapes behaviour as a link is made between a behaviour and a consequence. So if you think about it, if your child receives a desirable result from following an action, i.e. your child receives attention from you from either good or bad behaviour, the behaviour becomes more likely to occur again in the future. For example, if you give your child attention when they are having a tantrum, you are unintentionally rewarding your child's behaviour because they are receiving the attention they want from you. They are linking having a tantrum to receiving attention from mommy and daddy, resulting in you unintentionally reinforcing this type of behaviour and increasing the chances of this happening again. All right, positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement involves the use of pleasant enticements or motivations to encourage certain behaviours. This is important for managing behaviour because reinforcement can be used to strengthen your outcome of your desired behaviour. So for example, 
If a parent rewards their child with praise every time they pick up their toys, the desired behavior is consistently reinforced as your child is linking picking up the toys with the attention from mommy and daddy. As a result, your child will, be, will reinforce this behavior and they'll become more likely to clean up the mess. The first two years are crucial in shaping a child's social, emotional and psychological development and children spend 85% of their time with their parents in their home. You, the parents, are key in shaping and molding your child's behavior along with their social and emotional and psychological development. From this, you've now learned that children learn by example. So it's important to be a positive role model, demonstrating what good behavior looks like. By consistently modeling how you would like your child to behave in a warm and loving environment where you can learn and support and nurture your child. By doing this, you are forming positive behaviors that will form the foundational blocks that shape your child into the adult they become. So why is managing your child's behavior important? It is important for ample reasons, but I'm going to look at a couple of reasons why it is important for a child to learn to manage their behavior. Firstly, it's important because it impacts on their sense of self-worth. Just think about it. If your child behaves poorly, they'll feel bad. And if they feel bad, they will act out. This will affect their sense of worth as it will lower their self-esteem. By teaching your child how to manage their behavior and solve their problems, you are teaching them coping skills to overcome life's challenges and teaching them how to feel good about themselves, which will boost their self-esteem, give them confidence and increase their sense of self-worth. This will promote positive mental health and well-being, which will enable your child to strive to reach their full potential. Another reason is emotional regulation. By teaching your child how to identify and manage their emotions, they will be able to regulate their emotions, which in turn will help them manage and control their behavior and emotional outbursts, or excuse me, outbursts. When children are taught how to cope with their negative feelings, such as anger, frustration, or embarrassment, and they're able to express them in an appropriate manner, it is much easier for them to behave more appropriately. Emotional regulation is key to children developing resilience and emotional well-being, which is essential to positive mental health and well-being during their childhood and adulthood. Now, the relationship with others. We know how children feel about themselves influences their behavior, but how they behave also influences how they are seen by others and how others interact with them. A child who is willing to share their toys behaves mannerly and in a respectful manner, which will have more children wanting to play with them than a child who shouts, hits or hurts other children. It is important for your child to be able to manage their feelings and behavior in order for them to develop the social skills needed to make friends and form positive relationships with others and also to form and maintain positive child and parent relationships. The ability to learn. If children are able to manage and control their own behaviours, then they are able to focus on learning, enjoy school and perform better academically and have more professional success in later life. Research shows children who continually misbehave or act out are unable to focus on learning, dislike school, resulting in poor academic performance and of poor educational outcomes. Now, so what does this, what does managing your child's behavior require of parents? Patience, 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 and more patience. Be patient with your child. Learn good behavior it takes a lot of patience, time, and effort, but it'll be worth it in the long run as these are the foundational positive behavior blocks that you and your child can build on and will use in the future. Knowing there is no such thing as a perfect parent, but only a real parent. All parents make mistakes and there's no superwoman cape to help them for their job. Just every parent is trying the best for their child. Knowing that children are all different. What works for one child may not work for another. Focus on good behaviors. Teaching children how you want them to behave by rewarding their good behavior and setting limits on their more challenging behaviors, which Charlene will talk to you more about in strategies for dealing with challenging behaviors. Remember, setting limits is not about punishment, but it's about teaching your child self-discipline skills and what is acceptable behavior for their age. Getting the balance right is not easy. Parenting is hard work. You're not expected to have all the answers and a lot of parenting is trial and error. Parenting is a special time of learning for both you and your child. Remember to have a sense of humor and most importantly, the important thing is that you and your child have a close and loving relationship and enjoy this special time. Your child will not stay this age forever. 
Now, I'm going to just briefly look at five key points to managing your child behaviour, which Charlene will talk about in more detail. A regular number one, a regular routine. A regular routine is important for managing a young child's behaviour. Organised and predictable routines give structure to the day and ensure your child is fed, has rest and has play periods. Routines help to minimise tantrums, poor behaviour and resolve disputes because your child feels safe and secure as they know what's happening next. For example, <clears throat> excuse me, having a place for their toys or a tie box. Something as simple as this will create a sense of order and security for your child. After your child has finished playing with their toys, you could both pick up the toys and put the toys back in their tie box. This will become a habit for your child if you follow the same order of events every time and will teach them responsibility, giving them a sense of achievement and also helping you with the housework. Be specific. First of all, make sure you have your child's attention when you're telling them something. Get down to your child's level and speak in a calm voice. Be specific about what you want your child to do and be clear in their instructions, in your instructions. If you say, watch what are you, you're doing, this isn't clear enough, as your child will not understand what you want them to do. Whereas if you say, I want you to keep your car on the floor and not on the table, this is easier for your child to follow as they can visualize step by step what you want them to do. Number three, be consistent. Consistency is crucial in managing behavior. A clear set of limits and boundaries provide children with structure and teaches them how to behave. Both parents or caregivers need to agree on acceptable behaviour and consequences for unacceptable behaviour, otherwise your child will get mixed messages. Also, it's important for you to follow through on what you say you will do. If you don't follow through in your word, your child will just learn to ignore you. Children naturally look for loopholes such as trying your patient when you're tired or in a hurry. These are the most difficult times to be consistent in managing your child's behaviours, but it'll be worth it in the long run, as your child will learn even when you're busy or tired, you won't give in to them. It's also important to be aware of your own mood and energy levels when you're managing your child's behaviour. Number four, reward positive behaviour. All children have a need for attention and inappropriate behaviour. It's often a child's way of getting the attention they need. By acknowledging and rewarding the good behaviour, the child is getting the attention they need and helps maintain ongoing behaviour. By withdrawing your attention when you're doing something you do not like, they do, that you do not like, minor misbehaviours, you are teaching them that they will not receive the attention they are looking for by acting out, leaving it less likely to happen again. Rewards like a kiss, hug or a smile or a simple well done should be given right away so the child links the behaviour to the attention they are receiving. Finally, time out to calm down. Take time out to calm down is an effective way to take a child out of a situation when they're misbehaving. This time out to calm down is also important for you because you can have some space and calm down as well. You can do this by identifying a safe, quiet place for your child to sit where there are no distractions, a chair or a beanbag, but your child must know this is the time out to calm down seat. You need to be able to see them and be near them. For time out to work, your child must understand why they are being disciplined, know what they did wrong, what they should have done instead, and what they must do to put it right. Children must know that the behaviour leads to time out, what behaviours lead to time out to calm down, and be warned if they continue with the poor behaviour, they will be going to take some time out to calm down. Make sure the time out is immediate and that you state the reason. No hidden. Go to time out. Be specific and brief. This helps ensure that your child is able to link her action with its, the consequence. Explain to your child that they both need to be calm and back to their normal good behaviour before they come out of the time out to calm down. Explain to your child that they must be completely quiet and calm for five seconds before ending this time out. Also explain to your child that you're doing this as a way for both of you to get on better when they come out of time out. Thanks for listening now and now I'm going to pass you on to Mary. Thank you so much for that, Veronica. And I am now going to talk to you about the ages and stages in understanding uh, child behaviour. So I'm just going to share my screen now with you too. So you're just going to have to give us a wee second to get that up. And so if you could just give me the thumbs up there, if you can see it or not. Brilliant. Thank you, Charlene. OK, so the ages and stages and understanding and managing child behaviour. So 
up to um, in the first year of life. I'm just going to move this a wee second now for myself here because I'm actually blocking it. Okay, sorry about that. So by the, by the stage your baby reaches around 10 months of age, they can typically get around under their own power. Should it be crawling or bum hopping? And the places they want to go is where their curiosity will take them. So before this actually happens, it is a good time or good practice to child proof your home for safe and free exploration. What some parents do is that they actually child proof one room in the house totally and keep this as their baby's adventure play area. If you visit um, nanas or grandas or other homes quite regularly, it might be an idea too for them to child proof one room as well. Um, it, it just means that you have a safer environment for your, ch your child. This is the reason for this is because when your child is young, absolutely everything is exciting. And we need to put things in place. So covering electrical sockets and bracket, bracketable, or putting away your bracketables, your valuables, things that are important to you, electronics, harmful objects, keep them out of reach of your child, your young child. Use fire guards to protect from open fires and cover sources of heat like radiators or hot water pipes, you know, in older homes, you know, put them away because when your child is down on the ground, they just see that as something to go and have a look at, touch them, taste them, whatever. A young child is too young to understand why some things can be explored with and why others cannot and may actually be dangerous and cause harm. So we as parents can select what to leave within our children's reach. This means that we can create a safe learning environment for our child. And by doing this, you will reduce your anxiety and worries over your child coming to harm. So one to two years of age, what can we expect with regards to behavior? So the first thing we have to learn is that angry outbursts are normal, and healthy at this age. It is all part of the natural process of your child's development. And what we need to do is to avoid reacting to anger with anger. Meet their needs by remaining as calm as possible. Ensure good nutrition, playtime, regular sleep and routine, all things that Veronica have has talked to us about. These are all important in managing healthy moods. Just think on yourself whenever you're feeling tired or if you're not feeling tired, how you can react to the same situation. It can be a very, very different experience. The same if we're hungry, angry. This is the reason why hangry came about because we react completely different to different situations. Our little children are no different. Encourage their independence. Your child is at an age where they want to make choices and be more independent. Let them feed themselves and help with small jobs around the house. But it's important to be firm about what is acceptable and what is not. Respond to unacceptable behavior by distracting or directing your child to a new interest rather than scolding or getting angry. We just have to keep reminding ourselves this is normal. This is my child's development. They are learning how to deal with these situations. Help them learn. Children do not have the experience of skills needed to control their behavior. Ignore tantrums unless your child is going to hurt themselves. As Pauline or Veronica said, be patient and calm. You are role modeling positive behavior, which has a big impact on your child's behavior. Show them that you understand their frustration. At two years of age, your child wants to be able to do things for themselves. They can now move around better, have a greater knowledge of where things are kept and how things work. This means that the use of the word no by your child and possibly yourself will be heard often. My second child, I think her second or third word was no, and it was used repeatedly. And it was then that I realized, oh my gosh, I'm using the word no too often. So I have to say, I tried to not use it for about six months because it was really, really interesting. And it was something that I observed and it is quite amazing how much they take from us and we, they, they learn from us, we are their models. Um, encouragement. 
It can be helpful for you as a parent to encourage your child's independence, but not get into conflict with what your child with your child whilst doing this. And this simply means that if they're trying out something like this huge brush, this little guy's trying this huge brush, let them experience the size of the brush, how it moves, how they do different things, rather than us trying to maybe bring along a small brush and say, use this instead. Allow them to try and experience rather than us being part of, you know, telling them how to do it sort of thing. Allow them to learn through encouragement. So tips and understanding your child's behaviour at two. Young children want to be part of what you are doing in the home. Include them. Get them to do small tasks like dusting or putting things away. This is good practice for when they get older. If you get it started now, you're going to have children who will help you through their, 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 their later lives, their later years in childhood. So prepare your child for what is going to happen next. And what I mean by this, if you're going shopping, you know, give them time to get ready. You could provide them with a time frame by just saying, okay, we're going, we're going to the shop in five minutes. As adults, we like notice for um, different things that we're going to do or trips that we're going on. Children are no different. Give them that little bit of notice. Let them make small decisions if possible. So give choices where possible, for example, do you want to walk or go in your buggy? Or would you like to wear your green shoes or your blue shoes? If your child is reluctant to move, try distracting them by saying you have something to show them. Now in the summertime, you can make it fun. Say, for example, when you're going out, let's see who um, sees the first yellow flower when we go out. Once we find the first yellow flower, it could then be the next. So you're, you're, you're making the whole experience fun, something to look forward to. Tell your child exactly what you want them to do. At two years of age, children need to hear exactly what you want them to do. This is what Veronica was talking about with regards to being specific. Statements like, Put your toys away is too broad for your child to understand. You need to break it down and be specific to aid understanding. So first you could say, we pick up the blocks. Now we're going to pick up the balls. Then we put them in the toy box. So you're breaking it down into specific steps that helps your child understand the task at hand at that moment in time. Three years and older. So at three years of age, a child's understanding and use of language is more extensive. You can now explain things at this age and begin to give reasons for rules you have set. Children around this age enjoy emerging social skills, which see them starting to play alongside other children. Children will like to be involved again with what is going on in the home. So always keep them involved, keep them doing the little chores and tasks. Your child's growing independence also means that they are making choices of what to do or what to wear. They have their own ideas about how to do them. Negative behavior at this age can be linked to the child going outside the limits or boundaries that have been set for them by their parents or caregivers. I often say that a young child, that is their job. That is their job. They want to explore. They want to push boundaries, but we're there to set them so that they stay safe and they don't come to harm. So tips for managing behavior at three years and older. Create a positive home environment. Spend time every day if possible playing and having fun with your child, even if it's just for 15 minutes. Try to encourage positive behaviour by using a reward system. Make a chart with points or stars awarded for good behaviour. This provides a visual reminder of all their successes through the week. And rewarding good behaviour. Reward your child with privileges praise or activities rather than with food or toys. Change the rewards frequently. Children get bored if the reward is always the same. And always, always follow through with the reward. It's back to what Veronica says, if you don't follow through, your child is learning not to trust your word and they begin then to ignore the system that you've tried to put in place. 
So consequences for misbehavior. Consequences should be spelled out in advance. So we're talking at three years of age that the child now begins to understand the reasons why we have rules and boundaries. And they, whenever uh, something happens, the consequences should occur immediately after your child has misbehaved. For example, if you hit your brother, you will have a time out. And the types of consequences we could have are time out, removing privileges, for example, limiting TV time, or leaving the situation. And it is important to try and limit the use of consequences to focus on one or two difficult behaviors like hitting or other aggressive behaviors. Now, Charlene is actually going to look at some of these uh, areas in more detail now. So thank you for listening to me. And now I'm gonna stop share and hand you over to Veronica. And Thank you, Mary. Hello, everybody. Sorry, just a second. Sorry, I'm just having a wee bit of trouble with this one. Now, can everybody see that okay? Good. So um, I'm going to look at um, dealing with some challenging behaviour. Um, there are many things we as parents can find challenging with our kids, and it would be impossible to cover them all in this one session. As we know, all children are different and what works for one won't necessarily work for another. But there are a few strategies that we can be, that we can be very useful and make some tasks that a little bit easier. The first one that we're going to look at this morning is bedtime. Now, have you ever seen a more perfect picture? It's so precious and sometimes it can be the best part of the day. You've been run off your feet all day. Kids have been squabbling. You've homeworks, washing, ironing. I'm sure I don't need to go on, but now it's finally some me time. But maybe some nights it can be more like this or even this. But how can we get this time for ourselves if we have the challenge in behaviour at bedtime? First of all, we need a proper bedtime routine. And this isn't something that just happens overnight. We need to establish this over time. So set a time that is suitable for your child's age. If your child is old enough, discuss what's going to happen. For example, we'll have wine down time with no TV or electronics. Maybe you could draw some pictures, do jigsaws, have a little supper or warm milk. This has been known to help promote sleep, but just to make sure that you give it a beaker or a cup before going to bed. This prevents choking hazards and also good for dental hygiene. Then perhaps bath time. Some parents might choose to use lavender or other essential oils, um, and this can help calm and relax your baby or child. Clean teeth and then a story and cuddles. This is just an example, but you do what works for you. But make sure your child knows what to expect. Give them some notice or time to prepare. Just like we have 10 minutes to play, then supper time, or 15 minutes until bedtime. And the key is to be consistent. Don't do it for maybe two nights and then skip a few, as this will give mixed messages and confusion. Sometimes your child may go through a phase of waking up try to test the limits, or maybe just being afraid to go to bed. Always reassure them. Don't just let them cry themselves to sleep. Their fears are quite real to them. You might need to try putting a chair next to their bed until they fall asleep and slowly move it closer to the door over a period of time. This will reassure them that they are safe and you're close by. If they keep getting up, take them back to bed, tuck them in, and try not to get into a conversation. You may need to do this many times over several nights, but your child will soon realise that you aren't giving up and will just go to sleep. And just remember, you're not doing this to be cruel. 
they need their sleep and you also need this time. So it's in everyone's interest that this works. Biting. This is a stage that some children go through and usually around two years. It can be a very distressing time for parents. And it isn't a sign that there's something wrong with your child. It could be that they're teething um, or in pain, feeling frustrated, trying to get a reaction, or just that they are finding it so difficult to express themselves, as with many other behaviours of two-year-olds. But if we try to understand why they exhibit this behaviour, it may be more manageable. So we have spent their full two years teaching them to do everything they can do, and they learn this at an alarming rate. We then constantly tell them no or prevent them from doing something they have mastered, albeit for their own safety, and they don't understand why. So if our child bites, we must ensure that we tell them that this behaviour is wrong and it hurts. It is not allowed. Try to remain calm and remove them from the situation. Give them time to calm down. And future, look out for signs that this may be about to happen. If they are tired, angry, just try to distract them with another activity. If they are getting annoyed with another child about toys, try to teach them the words they need to express their feelings or other little strategies such as hugging their favourite teddy, blowing bubbles, provide some fidget toys and rainmakers, anything to alleviate the situation. It may take some time, um, but under careful supervision and guidance, they should grow out of this. Tantrums in public places. This always reminds me of the ad on TV where the child had a tantrum in the supermarket and the mum just simply lies down beside her and does exactly the same. The child just then stops and looks at her. And it can be so embarrassing. We feel everyone is just staring at us and judging. But in reality, most people have been there and they are simply empathising with us. Every child has at one time or another done this. So if it happens, try to remain calm. If you can just pick them up and leave, go to a quiet place or even outside. Stay with them and make sure they can't hurt themselves or anybody else. Then when they have calmed down, you can then respond. Talk to your child about what is acceptable behaviour and what isn't. Children feel more secure with boundaries and routines. It is often the unknown that can cause anxiety or frustration. So if you think your child is going to have a bit of a meltdown when you go somewhere, try to prepare them for the trip first. For example, if you're going shopping, tell them beforehand. Perhaps make it into a game. Give them a list with pictures of what they have to find in the supermarket. Or you could have a reward chart that when they get home after a successful trip, they get to add a sticker. If you're going out to eat, bring books and crayons or just something to keep them amused during the wait for food. It will make things so much easier, but it's all about being prepared and carrying a bag like Mary Poppins. Meal times. It is important that from the minute we begin weaning, that we teach our baby as much about behaviour at meal times as it is about eating. Try when you can to make this about family time also. Everyone sits together and has their meal. If this is what your child is used to, it then becomes the norm. They will go through stages when they aren't on the high chair anymore that they may run around, but it's just testing the limits. Make sure you return them to their seat and everyone models good sitting. Your child may also go through a phase of fussy eating. Again, remain calm and don't make a big deal of it. Most chances are they will eat this food again. And sometimes they just like to exert some power over the things they can control. Try not to give treats or snacks as a replacement if they don't eat their meal. This will only reinforce it for future meal times. Make meal times fun. You can try different themes, such as pizza faces, vegetable dinosaurs, fruit kebabs, or games to help them try different foods. Allow them to help prepare the meals or even make a little vegetable garden that they can help out with planting, looking after and watching them grow. So understanding and managing difficult behaviour. Communication is essential in managing behaviour. We need to let our child know what is acceptable behaviour 
and also listen to why they are behaving in a particular manner. Model how it is you want them to behave. And most importantly, choose your battles. Decide which is really necessary and which you can't ignore. If your child is angry and screaming, don't meet their mood with shouting. It's just like uh, fighting fire with fire. Just think if you're angry or annoyed and someone shouts at you or tells you to snap out of it, it makes you feel worse. If someone puts their arms around you and asks what's wrong or how can I help, it makes all the difference and your child will feel the same. Time out to calm down, as Veronica had discussed. This can be for you or your child. If you're finding it difficult to manage their behaviour, take a break, but always ensure their safety first. Have a coffee, stand in the garden for a few minutes, practice mindfulness or deep breathing, whatever works for you. If you need your child to calm down, have some activities to hand that you know works. Perhaps as Play-Doh, even just filling the sink with water, blowing bubbles, basically a distraction, and some of these are also very calming. And try to think of your child going through a phase of terrific twos as opposed to the terrible twos. They aren't trying to be terrible, they're just learning to be human. Try putting a different spin on it, see if it helps. So we're going to have a little look at punishment versus discipline and why discipline is more constructive in managing challenging behaviour. Punishment is about controlling a child rather than teaching the child how to control themselves. And most often, punishment changes the way the child thinks about themselves. It can be physical, such as spanking, hitting or causing pain, psychological, including isolation, shaming or disapproval. It is a penalty that will stop the behaviour at the time. It won't teach them not to do it again. Maybe not de deterring them from carrying out the behaviour, but doing it in a manner that they won't get caught. Punishment instills fear in the child, causing negative feelings for the parent or the adult. Discipline teaches children new skills, such as how to manage their behaviour, solve problems and deal with uncomfortable emotions. It comes from the Latin word disciple, which means to teach. Discipline helps kids learn from their mistakes and teaches them socially appropriate ways to deal with emotions like anger and disappointment. Discipline techniques include strategies such as time out or removal of privileges. It establishes boundaries, notices and rewards positive behaviour and has reasonable consequences in response to negative behaviour. So I think we can all agree that discipline would be the best way to, to manage the challenge of behaviour. So just remember, how you react is normally connected to your how your child is behaving. Always try to be more self-aware and mindful of how you are feeling. If you can step back and think before reacting, it will reduce the feelings of guilt after the event. We all have at times where we didn't handle a situation in the way we probably should have and then just feel terrible afterwards. If your child's behaviour is linked to their stage of development, sorry, your child's behaviour is linked to their stage of development as Mary has discussed, and it is the role of the parent to provide the structured freedom that a child needs to explore and learn new things. As far as possible, concentrate on positive behaviour and ignore the negative. What you pay attention to is what you will get more of, so remember to reinforce and praise that good behaviour. Be as specific as you can. Keep your emotions under control and speak calmly. Let your child know that you love them even when you dislike their behaviour. And as Veronica had said, be consistent in what you say and ensure everyone agrees with these boundaries. It is so important that all adult, adults are on the same page so as not to confuse your child. And remember, they are only small for a little while. So um, now I'm just going to show you a little video from fam the Family Links Nurturing Programme. And this just highlights everything that we, myself, Mary and Veronica, have talked about. So if you just give me a wee second, I will get that up for you.
Time out, boundaries and consistency. Blowing hot and cold. Discipline? Ha! Thanks, Mum. Well, well, it's not easy, is it? Not with your two. They're good kids, really. You were the same. Clip round the ear set you right. Mum, it's just... They don't listen, do they? I mean, I can be yelling at them to do something and it's like I'm not there. Oh, they just wind me up so much sometimes. I, I don't know what to do. Sometimes I just leave them to it. I haven't got the energy. I know what I'd do. Big help, Mum. I put them on the timeout step, but they won't stay there. They're always moaning things aren't fair. Never mind fair. You don't follow through. That's your problem. And you don't back me up, Mum. It's not like it was in your day. Mum is like, so unfair sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Like the other day, we made a fort out of cushions in the living room and she thought it was a great fort. So the next day, we did an even better one with speakers from the stereo and everything. And she went mad, didn't she, Becky? She go rah, rah, like a big angry lion. She said, clear it up now. You're always making a mess. And I said, but you like the other one. And she said, you're not getting any pocket money if that stereo's damaged. And I started shouting because I'm saving for a football shirt. And Beck started crying. I started crying. Because Mum was shouting at me to stop shouting. And Nan said it would have never happened in her day. And then Mum went really mad and dragged me to my room and shouted I couldn't come out and put Becky on the timeout step. Then Becky did a pee. Because that's what she does sometimes when she's upset. I did a wee on the stairs. So you never know what's going to happen with Mum. <laughs> Uh-oh, have you got any kitchen roll? You're going to need it. Mum's much nicer these days, isn't she, Bex? And she plays with us more. She not been a lion for ages. Yeah, like on Thursday, we were both doing colouring and Bex wanted the green pen, but I really needed it, so she started shouting. I shout, I want it! Give me! It's not fair! Ow! But Mum said, that's not how to ask for things, Becky. You know the rules. You have to ask nicely. If you keep shouting, you'll need a timeout. But then Becky threw all the other pens on the floor and started jumping up and down. Did I? So Nan said, looks like a timeout for Becky. You need to calm down, my girl. So Nan took Becky to the timeout cushion and said, Timeout starts when you're quiet and it's over when you feel calm. Okay, Becky? What did I say? You said okay. Oh, okay. And Nan said, I need a bit of calm down too after all the drama, so I'll sit near you. No talking though. When Becky felt calm... I was calm after one, two, three minutes. It was more like one minute. Anyway, Mum said, you can come and watch the night garden now, Bex. Well done for doing your time out so well. But that's for little kids, so I played with my Lego. Nan had fallen asleep though, so she couldn't watch it. <laughs> yeah, she's going to night night garden. So timeouts are very good for Becky when she's done something naughty. You do timeouts too. You chase Kitty and got its tail and it's scratchy Nan. Oh, yes, I do it as well. Mum gave herself a timeout too, just to make sure everyone was calm. And you watch the night garden. I seen you. Becky, that was my bit. Mum! Becky ate my bit of orange. What did you spot? A united front. Both adults agreed to time out and followed through calmly and firmly. Close but not distracting. Nan sat nearby, but there was no eye contact or touch. As long as it takes. Time out stops when a child is calm. It's not one minute per year for a child's age. Good for everyone. Time out to calm down is for everyone. Okay, um, so that's um, 
just finished up with my uh, piece and I'm going to pass you on to Lynn has, who is going to talk you through some of the reflexology. Hi everyone, um, we heard from our previous speakers there about the importance of a good routine and the importance of spending quality time with your child in relation to their behaviour. Um, we're going to look at a little demonstration of baby reflexology now. And I just wanted to say it's not just for babies. You, this is very useful for older children as well. Uh, so we're going to look at comforting and calming our babies and toddlers and older children, of course. So enjoy the video. Hi and welcome to our second session in baby reflexology, which we will be looking at sleeping and comforting baby. Very useful to know. So I'm going to start off just by showing you the wee chart that I have here for off the foot. If you can see it and you may want to take a screenshot of this. It'll be a wee ready reckoner for you to go to whenever you need to. Okay, hopefully you've all got that now. Okay, so as I said, we're going to be looking at uh, the sleeping and comforting areas of baby's foot today. So we're going to start with the wee foot. Um, the calming part, this is excellent for just before bedtime. So using the knuckle, or shaft of the forefinger, lightly stroke down the sides of the neck and plantar surface of the big toe. And it's just in here, if you can see, so okay. And always work downwards, lifting the finger off after each downward stroke. So you can either use your finger or the shaft of your knuckle. So this area actually involves the vagus nerve, which is very beneficial in assisting feeding discomforts, but it's equally advantageous in soothing and relaxing baby. So the calming area, this is an instant calmer which will come in very, very useful, I'm sure. Uh, with the forefinger, see just here in the foot, okay? Just, there's the ball of the foot, so just in this dip. With the forefinger, make a circular movement on the solar plexus point three times. And even as a comforter at the end of your treatment or at the end of the day, hold your middle finger on the solar plexus points of both feet for about 20 seconds. That really does calm baby down. Okay, so what you do with one foot you'll do on the other one, okay? So the next we're going to look at the spine stroke relaxer back rub. So with your forefinger on the medial, medial edge of the big toe, with a light touch, run your finger from top of the big toe to the heel in one movement. And again, we do this in three repetitions. Now you can use your knuckle or the shaft of your finger like so. So either either or whatever feels comfortable to you um, for baby. Now we're going to look next at the useful calming 
effect for a hyper baby. It uh, calms children very quickly when they've been emotionally upset. So you can give this treatment after using the stroking calming treatments, for example the neck calmer or the spinal strokes. And we can use a linking technique where we place one finger on the pineal area, which is the big toe at the outer edge, and one finger on what is known as L5. So if you see here, it's just coming up from the heel and we're just pressing in here. And you can intersperse two lots of 10 second hyper baby treatments with gentle and relaxing stroking movements over baby's foot. So you have the calming, instant calming. And then the outer toe down and press. And then we're going to finish today's session with soothing butterfly kisses. I love this part. So it's gently brushing over the top of each toe with the palm of your hand. And that's done three times. So we'll just do a quick recap. Remember, behind the big toe, three movements and a succession of three. Okay. And then the solar plexus, just below the ball of the foot in the middle, and that was circular movements. Swipping from the big toe down to the heel. Big toe down to the heel. And big toe down to the heel. And then we're going to place our finger in the pineal gland and L5. And press. And press. And you'll do the same for both feet. And again, we're going to finish with our butterfly kisses. And that's all of our second week complete. And I hope you'll have fun practicing and you'll have a very calm, relaxed baby after all of this. So the next time in session three, we'll be looking at well-being. Um, and looking at uh, just common childhood ailments and how we can help relieve those with the use of reflexology. So thank you very much for tuning in once again and hopefully I'll get to see you next time. Thank you again. Bye. Hi and welcome to your second session. Hello, uh, my name's Pauline and uh, I'm going to answer some of your questions. Well, actually we've run out of time almost. so. I'm going to only keep it to two questions. We've had a lot of interest in this particular webinar. So if I don't address a question you've asked, just email me at pauline at lifestartfoundation.org and I'll get back to you. Okay, well, Josephine says, uh, why has my child's behavior suddenly changed? Now, I'm assuming it's changed in a negative sense or you wouldn't be asking the question, Josephine. So. Uh, 
If your child's behaviour appears to have changed overnight, it is worth thinking about the recent changes that may have happened in their life, as this may hold the key to why their behaviour has changed. Lots of adults admit that they don't like change. However, over time, we learn how to manage our feelings about it. Young children can't process or vocalise how they feel about new things that are happening in their lives, and the unprocessed feelings can come out in their behaviour. Any number of things can lead to changes in children's lives and behaviour. A new sibling, perhaps moving house, separation and divorce, conflict in the home, parental stress or anxiety, and maybe it's the changes in our routines caused by the pandemic and the lockdowns that's affecting your child's behaviour, Josephine. You can help your child develop the tools needed to process change, and focusing on the positives will help them cope with new situations now and throughout their lives, and reduce the likelihood of anxiety or depression when they're older. Young children may not know what they are feeling, but you can help them identify the feeling by labelling it. You seem sad, nervous, scared, angry, excited, or whatever. Tell them that it's okay to feel like that. You understand and you love them. Showing them how you cope with stressful situations can help. There are age-appropriate books on most major life events that you can read together to help explain what's happening. And we can provide you with the information on those if you contact us. Remember, children learn by imitation. So how we cope with change can have important influence in how our children cope and on their behaviour. Uh, so I hope that's helped, Josephine. Now, John says that since the start of the lockdowns, our child has begun to kick, bite and lash out, and we just don't know what to do about it. Now, Charlene talked about this in her presentation this morning. We've all been under a great deal of stress as a result of the pandemic and the lockdowns. First of all, as Charlene says, you need to try and identify what triggers your child's violent behaviour. For example, is it when you ask them to do something at bedtime or mealtimes? Try talking to your child about their behaviour when they are calm. As Charlene says, take the time to listen. We hear a lot nowadays about talk to your child, talk to your child, but it's also important to listen and be empathetic. Is their behaviour linked to difficult emotions like stress, fear or anxious feelings? Could this reflect your own anxieties and worries? Acknowledge how your child was feeling at the time they lashed out and help them name that emotion. Explore anger with your child. Explain that anger is something everyone experiences, but violence is never ever acceptable. Tell them you want to help them find more appropriate ways to express their feelings. Stay calm. Act like you would like your child to act. If they see you behaving in a calm and kind manner, they're more likely to do the same. Try showing them how you keep calm when you're angry and frustrated. For example, show them how you breathe deeply and notice how your heart rate changes. Focus on positive things your child does. Praise little things. Try to give them more attention for the behaviour you want to see more than the behaviour you want to see less of. Set a positive example on behaviour. As well as talking to your child about how they feel, consider how the rest of the family is acting. How might that be influencing events? Again, it's important to look after yourself. Make sure you're taking time in your days for self-care and looking after your own mental health and well-being. I'm now going to pass you back to Mary, who's going to end our uh, webinar today. Thank you. Thank you, Pauline. And thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. Um, so I hope you have learned something about your young child's behaviour and how they are perfectly normal. And it's just all 
part of the ages and the stages of child development. So I did say in the thing that if you want to receive our booklets on understanding and managing child behaviour and our little booklet on Tot Time, Little Nursery Rhymes, celebrating the diversity here in Ireland, that all you have to do is email me and pass me on your full name and your full postal address and we will get these booklets out to you within the next few days or so. So thank you very much for joining us. And if you want to um, tune into our next webinar, it's going to be on play and the importance of play and ideas around play. And that will be on the 29th of June. So you can check out our Facebook page and we will also send you a little email too as a reminder of it. So hopefully we'll see you on the 29th and you enjoyed today. And thank you and goodbye.